I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. Just want a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor. If you find anything helpful in this video, we're trying to grow our channel. Click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, top in. Uh, this video is going to be uh, specifically focused on hard drives and solid state drives. So, what we're going to do in this video as a whole. So, we're going to talk about uh, some of the compatibilities as far as the different types that you can use, the different speeds for those types, the max sizes for those types. Uh, then, at the end, we're going to actually install a few of these for you. And then, we're going to show you how to test them two different ways. We're going to show you how to test it with Dell Diagnostic, which I'm a big, uh, big fan of because not only does it test the drive, it's going to test really the whole system. And then we're going to show you how to test it with a cool little tool called HD Sentinel. And HD Sentinel is nice because it's going to show you the power on hours, it's going to show you the health score, and it's just a nice secondary tool that you can use uh, to test drives outside of uh, Dell Diagnostics, which again, as I said, I'm a big fan of Dell Diagnostics. And one thing I did want to note with Dell Diagnostics, um, SAS drives, which we'll talk about coming up here in a minute, is one of the uh, compatible types. SAS drives, uh, because they run at 15K, uh, the ball bearings will wear out. Uh, Dell Diagnostics will give a predictive failure. Uh, actually, the system as a whole will give you a predictive failure in an amber light. Um, but Dell Diagnostics is a good way to tell if uh, SAS drives in particular are going to fail. So that's just one thing I did want to point out. So all right, let's just really hop into the good stuff. All right, so what types of drives are compatible? You have SAS, as we just mentioned. You have SATA, and you have solid state drives. And within solid state drives, you have SAS and SATA. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, so with SAS, the max speeds that you're going to get are really the the speeds as a whole you're going to get are 10K and 15K, 15K being the max. Um, and again, the 15K, the ball bearings will wear out. It's just going so fast. I mean, think about 15,000 revolutions per minute. That's just so much, and it's a mechanical device. It will wear out. It will fail. One of the reasons I highly recommend solid state drives, and that's just uh, you know me personally and some of the things that I recommend, right? Now, with SATA, the max speeds that you're going to get, or really the only speed you're going to get is uh, 7.2K. There's some oddball uh, type like the Velociraptor drives and stuff like that, or the Raptor drives, I call them the Velociraptor drives uh, that are 10K. Uh, but as a whole, with SATA, you get 7.2K. That's what you're going to get. When you see 5.4K, uh, generally that's either like a surveillance type of camera or that's uh, or surveillance type of drive or that is uh, a laptop drive. Uh, so with uh, Enterprise 7.2K for SATA, that's what you're going to get. Okay. Now with solid state drives, uh, the max speeds that you're going to get for SATA solid state drives are 6 gigabit per second and 12 gigabit per second for SAS. And of course you can use uh, 3 gigabit for the SATA or if you want to use 6, 6 gigabit for the SAS, these are all options as well. And technically if you want to throw in a 24 gigabit per second for SAS, it's just going to clock back down. Uh, but those are your, your options and the speeds as a whole. All right, so now let's talk about the max sizes. Well, the max sizes depend on uh, which type of form factor you have. So if you have the uh, four bay large form factor, the uh, max sizes are just going to be much, much higher. That's the uh, the benefits of having a 3.5 inch machine or a large form factor machine as a whole is that you can stuff in uh, cheap storage uh, for just a much, much lower price per gigabyte or per terabyte really. And so uh, that's the real big benefit for uh, a large form factor. Uh, so on the large form factor side, SAS will get you up to 20 terabytes. SATA will get you up to eight ter or 18 terabytes, and you will get 7.68 terabytes for your solid state drives. And now if you're at home and you put in something higher, I wouldn't be surprised to hear it. Drop a comment down below, let the other users know. We always like to hear what are uh, some of the experiments that people have done. I'm just telling you some of the stuff that we've done. Uh, now, for, and, and that's actually higher than if you look at Dell specs, it's even higher specs uh, because when Dell validated everything right, it was uh, there wasn't these sizes of drives out there because this is 13th gen. So as higher drives come out um, and then the BIOS updates come out and the firmware updates come out, they're still going to work. It's just a matter of um, what's actually been specced and validated. So just know that when you look at the specs, you might not say it actually works, but it does. So. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the uh, drives as a whole, the speeds, the sizes, the different types, all that good stuff, uh, we're going to show you how to physically install them, which is going to be super easy to show you that because they're hot swap. They just pop in and out, but we'll show you that nonetheless. And then we are going to show you the testing tools that we talked about. So let's hop in. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to open the machine. So like I said, this is going to be a very simple upgrade as a whole. So all you're going to do, we're going to remove our old drive. So we're just going to push the circle 
the red circle. It's just going to pop the latch open and we're just going to literally slide this out. It comes out really easy. We're going to set this to the side. So here's our new SSD. Because this is a 3.5 inch system, uh, we are using a 3.5 inch tray with the adapter or the converter that allows you to put in the 2.5 inch drive. This is very important. Back here we have a bunch of 2.5 inch drives because technically there's also an 8 bay version uh, that's a small form factor for the R430. So on our website we'll have both options. Uh, so make sure that you pick the proper tray for your system. So this will be very uh, easy. So you're just going to push the button and we're just going to slide this in. And honestly, this is a, just an incredibly easy upgrade as a whole. Uh, you literally just pop it in and it works. Uh, it's a great uh, upgrade to make your machine faster. Uh, SSDs are uh, definitely something that we always recommend as far as something that'll be better than hard drives and keep your machine uh, running faster if you're looking to just boost it up overall for overall performance. So uh, now that we've uh, installed it, we'll show you how to test your SSD using Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, this has been the Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test your hard drives and solid state drives with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Both Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel are great tools for not just testing your hard drives, but for testing all of the other components in your system. Specifically, Dell Diagnostics will test more than just your hard drives. It'll go ahead and test your graphics card, your CPU, your memory, um, your RAID card, your network card, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's a really neat tool that allows you to be able to see whether your system is in good health or not. And then HD Sentinel in, um, in particular will just test your hard drives but you can see things like the power on hours um, it'll give you like a health score to tell you like how much life the drive still has so it is a really cool tool both of them are, are very easy to use provide a lot of information and in this video I'm going to show you how to use both of them so let's go ahead and get started first we're going to go ahead and get started with Dell Diagnostics so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. Once you boot up your server, you want to go ahead and press F10. Um, and this will go ahead and bring us into the lifecycle controller. Once we're in lifecycle controller, we can go ahead and scroll down to where it says hardware diagnostics. And then we want to go ahead and click on run hardware diagnostics. And then you'll get this little warning right here. So it's just gonna say it's gonna take several minutes so we can go ahead and accept that. Um, and this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So actually getting into Dell Diagnostics and actually running the test is pretty simple. So we're just gonna let these tests run and these tests can say take several minutes up to several hours. So go ahead and just wait this out. If you're familiar with 12th gen and 13th gen uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, um, you'll notice that this looks very, very different. In the 12th gen and 13th gen, you can actually see the different tests on the left-hand side of the screen, um, and you have a lot more information on the middle of the screen. Um, and it's just a lot more simpler of a screen, but it's just going to go ahead and run through all of these tests. Um, and at the bottom, you can kind of you can pause these tests if you want, um, and then you can also see like what test specifically is running at that current time, an estimate of how much time is left for that test. So, like I said, these tests are going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. So once that final test has stopped running, it'll go ahead and stop. And then we will get a message that pops up on the screen that says success. So this means all of our tests have passed. Um, if you had any issues, then you would get an alternative message saying like, hey, these, these tests failed. Um, and at the very end here, we can actually view all of the information and all the different tests that were ran. Um, and this screen's a little bit more similar as to something we'd see on the 12th gen and 13th gen PowerEdge servers. But yeah, we can go through here, see all the test results for each individual test, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, the information about the system health, the configuration, um, and we can even go into the event log, which is pretty useful. So that is how we do uh, Dell Diagnostics and how we can test our hard drives, but also, you know, everything else in our system. And if you really want to see if your system is healthy, then go ahead and run Dell Diagnostics. It'll give you a lot of information if all the components are working the way that they should. So now I'm going to show you how to test your hard drives with HD Sentinel. 
Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.